My next guest has got a huge fight coming up here at Bellator 262 on July 16th. He's going to be taking on Johnny Eblen. It's Travis Davis back here on the program. Travis, how's it going, man? It's going good, man. I know initially you were supposed to fight uh, Tim Hiley in Ohio Combat League, and then you get the call, you're getting this fight. Uh, just how excited were you? Uh, stoked. <laughs> uh, you know, they uh, I'm super excited. I, I was uh, training for Tim, but they sent me the opportunity for Johnny on July 16th, and I had to jump on it, man. Uh, I felt like it was a really good uh, matchup opportunity for me, um, and, you know, finally getting the call to the big league. So I couldn't turn it down. No, absolutely. Was this something that you were expecting? Like, had you been talking to Bellator or did this come out of the blue? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had two fight offers in the last couple months. Uh, one was at 205, and then the other one, and both of them were in a, like a week's notice. Uh, one was at 205, and the other one was at 185. Uh, and, oh, sorry, there we go. Um, and I was uh, just, uh, I was in New Jersey with Dan for PFL in the bubble, um, and the one time I was in the bubble, the other time I just got out of the bubble. Uh, so, you know, we, uh, uh, we didn't, we, you know, we didn't really like the matchups per se. And with the last minute trying to make weight and, you know, with the travel restrictions, COVID and everything else going on. Um, so we kind of had to turn it down. So, you know, they were, they had been, you know, getting me a couple offers, but, um, this one, you know, we were already training for 185, So I was already getting my weight down and everything. And, uh, had already had, you know, a, a decent camp in. So it was just the perfect opportunity at the perfect time. When did you find out? When did you find out uh, that you got this fight? Uh, it was like two and a half weeks ago. Okay. Um, yeah, they didn't announce it until, what, last week? And, I've, you know, I, I've known for, uh, it was, I think, I want to say it was about almost three and a half or four weeks out from the fight date. Good. That's awesome. And I imagine just a one-fight deal, like kind of see how you look, and then they'll, they'll resign you, or is it a multi-fight deal? Yeah, it's a one fight, two fight option. So, uh, you know, they're going to see how I do, see how I perform. Obviously, if I win, I'm sure, you know, they'll sign me. Uh, and, you know, if something happens where I don't win and, um, you know, at least put on a good performance, hopefully they give me an opportunity to come back. And you're fighting one of their prize prospects. He's undefeated. He's 8 0. Uh, what do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him? Yeah, I mean, oh, my dogs. Uh, <laughs> He's excited. They, uh, what, what can you say? Yeah. Um, the, uh, I think I match up good against Johnny. Um, you know, he's uh, fairly um, – he's still fairly green on the feet. Uh, you know, as far as a striker, he's definitely more of a grappler-based uh, fighter. He likes to use his wrestling. He uh, does a really good job at controlling, you know, people on the ground. He takes the back. He looks for that um, that wrist ride on the, on the backside. And he likes to, you know, look for leg trips and leg sweeps uh, against the cage. Um, which is kind of like my style, to be honest with you. That's the same thing I, I, I like to implement when I have people against the cage. It's super effective. Um, so, you know, I, I jokingly said to my coach, uh, like uh, two weeks ago, I wish I had a, you know, I wish I had a, a duplicate of myself so I could, uh, you know, get that work against the cage. But my training partners have been pushing me and, and giving me the looks I need. Uh, you know, a couple of them putting themselves in um, some, you know, positions where, you know, I think that I'm going to be able to open up on him, you know, um, certain places where I think I'm going to be able to take advantage of him. So, you know, I know my teammates are, are, <laughs> are ready to, to go back to training the way they normally train and not having to mimic another guy for me. Well, that's cool. They stepped up for this fight and sort of mimicking your opponent, which is really great. Who, who are you getting to work with for this camp? Uh, Dan Spawn, uh, Lance Phillips, uh, and then like a, a bunch of amateur guys that are coming up uh, through our gym right now that are bigger, uh, you know, 205ers, 185ers. Um, so, I, I did, you know, got some good training when I was in PFL for the bubble. Um, got to work with, like, Tom Lawler and Corey Hendricks and all those guys, and they ended up, you know, getting their W uh, on those cards. So, uh, yeah, man, we got some good work out there. And uh, But, yeah, I, I haven't changed too much up. You know, we didn't really have a whole lot of time to get, like, you know, for me to go somewhere and get a camp or anything like that. So, um, But I, I feel good. Uh, I feel like my conditioning's good. My weight's already on point right now. So, um you know, no complaints. How is it being a part of that PFL like bubble? And, and did they ever, you know, kind of say, Hey, if we, you know, if we need anyone, we'll, we'll call on you or anything like that. Was that ever discussed? Uh, a little bit. I actually talked to Ray Seppo the one night. Um, and, uh, they were, it was for two Oh fivers. Obviously they don't have a one eighty five weight class. And I was like, look, man, I'm, I'm out here. My medicals are good. Um, you know, if you need somebody, uh, I'll gladly step in. Um, obviously I would prefer not to fight at 205, right. but 
lot of the guys that were fighting for the PFL 205 weight class were, you know, former 185ers anyway. Right. So yeah. um, I, I wasn't too, um, you know, worried about that. So uh, unfortunately, everyone made weight on the second go around. Uh, you know, everyone made weight. And all the fights ended up going off in the, the 205 pound division. Um, so they didn't end up needing me. Um, what, what's it like being in this position where, you know, it's somewhat short notice fight. You're fighting one of their guys, so to speak, right? I mean, if Bellator, you know, they built this guy up, they obviously want to see him do well. And, you know, in your case, it's a one fight deal. Like is the mentality almost like, you know, takes a bit of the pressure off where it's like, you know, I just got to go out there and perform. He's the one who's got to win. He's got the undefeated record. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I'm coming in as the underdog. Obviously he's, you know, already ranked number five, um, in Bellator in their, in their middleweight rankings and, uh, he's undefeated. You know, um, you know, I, I just read like a last week before they announced our fight that they just signed him to, you know, another multi-fight deal. So he's, you know, like you said, he's one of their blue chip prospects. He's one of their guys coming up. They've been building him since he was 4-0. Um, so, yeah, they're bringing me in. I'm sure they're expecting him to win, you know, or, or hoping he wins. They've invested time and money into him. Um, but that's, you know, that's for me to upset him, and, you know, upset them. And hopefully, uh, you know, I they like what they see with me and, and want to invest in me. So, um, that's, that's the plan, man. I, I don't really get, you know, I, even though this is like the biggest fight of my career as far as that goes, but I don't really let that, like the hype and, and the stress of like the anxiety of that stuff get to me, uh, leading up to the fights, man. You know, like I've said many times before, a fight's a fight. Once you, they lock the door and you're in there, it's go time. I, as soon as I sign the contract, that's when I'm, I'm already in, you know what I mean? Once I put my name on that dotted line, I've already committed to, to getting in that cage and, and throwing down. And, and, you know, that's what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 10 years. And so it's, it's, it's. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other thing that's kind of obvious in this fight is you have, you know, almost double the fights he does. How much do you feel like that will play a role in, in the matchup? Just that you've been in the cage longer than he has. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it was one of the first things my coach has said to me, you know, he's like, you know, you're, you're the veteran, you know, you're coming, even though you're being brought in, uh, and he's, you know, been fought for the bell tour four fights already and stuff. He's like, you've got double the fights that he has. And I, I plan on using that experience, man. Um, you know, he's had, uh, a couple of, but three decision fights, uh, decision wins for Bellator. So, you know, he's obviously been going, getting good time in, in the cage and, and getting work. Um, but, you know, I think just using um, using what I've learned over the past 14 professional fights uh, as far as, you know, just taking my time, getting in there, feeling comfortable, feeling relaxed, um, you know, I tend to fight better that way. If I come out too amped up, sometimes I'll, um, in the past I've, I've gassed early or I've gassed in the middle, in the middle of the fight because, um, you know, I've I'm a finisher. You know, I'm always looking for the finish. And sometimes I put myself in bad positions to get the finish and then the finish doesn't come. And then, you know, then you're sitting there trying to fight out all these bad spots um, to get out, you know, to get back into the fight. So, you know, I'm just going to take my time. You know, I know he's going to come out. He's going to be aggressive. Uh, I'm going to have to weather weather the storm a little bit, as, as they say. Um, but, you know, I have a, you know, I have, I have a couple ideas the way this fight could go. You know, he, he, he might come out aggressive. He might backpedal, you know, he might give me space and let me use my range. And then I might, who knows, I might get a little more aggressive. Um, it just depends on, uh, you know, how, how, how I'm feeling, how he's kind of coming at me and how, how I'm going to kind of approach that, uh, that mindset of, is it going to be a later, you know, is this fight going to go in my favor towards the later the fight or is, a, is there going to be a quick finish? And uh, you mentioned sort of, uh, you know, cutting down to middleweight. I know your fight against Hiley, I believe, is the week after. Um, so how is the cut going as we're, as we're getting closer to the date? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, you know, I've been floating in between like 198 and 200 for the last week and a half. So my weight's pretty much already on point to start, you know, my, my water cut. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've gotten to eat some like, I wouldn't say cheat meals, but more of like, you know, refeeds, I guess, where I'm just eating a little bit more more food and stuff. Um I think the it's you know going out there. I have to leave Sunday to go out there, so the week of is going to be a little challenging because we're going to be stuck in the hotel and stuff. And I'm actually bringing like most of my food with me uh, in 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 the uh, travel bag and stuff. Um, and just being out at the PFL bubble was a. I'm glad I kind of did that little thing uh, twice now because kind of already has me in a mindset of what I'm going to have to be like at the hotel. It's it's you know it's um, I'm not sure. 
how they have it set up. You know, at PFL, they had they provided you breakfast and lunch, and then you were responsible for your own dinner. Um, and we, you know, the first time we went, it didn't go well, even for Dan. Like, we, we didn't really have that kind of planned out very well. Uh, but the second time when we went back, you know, we had had meal plans. We had ordered food from, you know, a food prepping company that was delivering it to us and stuff. Uh, to kind of, I made him do it so I could, you know, I could start my weight cut and, and to keep him on point as well with his weight. So it worked out. I think, you know, this is going to be somewhat similar as far as, you know, five, the five or six days that were there before the fight. Not looking too far ahead here, but if you do come out on top on July 16th, you know, handing this guy's first loss on a big, uh, you know, promotion like Bellator, is there a bit of vindication in the back of your head? Just because you're a guy that I know has been grinding away for a while. You've been, you know, wanting an opportunity like this, whether it was UFC or, or Bellator in this case. Um, is that something that's crossed your mind, just knowing that all the work you put into this is finally going to pay off? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, you know, I'm stoked to finally get the opportunity to, uh, you know, not just – not just to get the fight for a bigger promotion, but be on the main card, be the first fight on the main card. You know, obviously, uh, Bellator did some research on me to, you know, to know that this is going to be an exciting fight. Um, you know, that's why they put it on. I'm assuming that's why they put it as the first fight of the night. Uh, you know, Johnny comes out and looks to finish, and I come out to look to finish. You know, I have um, out of my 10 wins, nine of them are stoppages. Um, you know, I think seven of them are first round stoppages. So, uh, you know, they, and, and my lot, most of my losses are either by split decision or, you know, the TKO for a cut and stuff. And, um, so yeah, man, I, I'm sure they expect a uh, fireworks out of the two of us. And, and I'm sure that's what we're going to give the fans, you know, um, that's, you know, I, I, I fight to, I fight to win every fight, uh, and I'm not easy to put away. And obviously he's not easy to put away, you know, he's eight. No. So, um, I think it's going to be two uh, middleweight standing out there and trying to see who gets to finish faster, you know, who, who's able to put one guy away and who's not. We're looking forward to it. It is July 16th, Bellator 262. Travis, great catching up with you, man. It's always a pleasure. Uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media and if you got any sponsors or shout outs, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, man. Uh, definitely uh, T Bam Bam Davis on Instagram. Just give me a follow. Uh, that's linked to my uh, Facebook and Twitter account. So you should be able to link and find those pretty easily from there. Um, and got to give a shout out to my sponsors, Subzilla, Central House Spina Joint, The Training Room, Atlas uh, Performance uh, CBD Products, uh, and then obviously my um, my management team, Iridium, for you know getting me the fight. You know we've been working with them. I've been working with them for a couple years now, and you know we've been itching to get into this next step and get to this next stage. Uh, stage and we're here now, so you know I plan on performing and uh, making the best of it.